And it's a little bit extra special. And it's, it's humbling. I'm very honored. Uh, great thing is to see some old teammates, my college teammates will be here, so uh, my whole family. So uh, I'm, uh, I'm looking forward to it. I mean, there were so many moments, but I mean, obviously the, the uh, 2000 playoffs with Bonds in San Francisco, uh, first game that I got the pitch here uh, after I got traded on opening day, uh, and then making a bunch of All Star games, and, and uh, well, one All Star game, I should say, <laughs> 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 making a bunch in Cincinnati, but uh, you know, Mike's home run, obviously, uh, the 9 11. And just the, the number of teammates that I've had over the years, you know, it's been, uh, I, could, I could really say that uh, you know, for 14, 15 years that I've been here, every teammate was a pleasure to be, to be with. John, when you were, your last year here was David Wright's first. Mm -hmm. I mean, did you even see Ben? Or what he was, no, he yeah, he's very special. He's a special kid. Uh, I just told David now, this, this team reminds me a little bit of the 2000 team. You know, nobody kind of gave us a chance. Uh, we had one superstar in Mike and they have David and uh, you know we had Hampton and Leiter and they have Santana and Dickie and, and Nice uh, and everybody else is contributing you know the guys who are getting hurt the guys got coming up they're doing the job so this team reminds us of that they're a bunch of scrappers they do uh, they come you know blue collar guys they come in every day and they, they, they scrap and fight and try to try to win the ball game. John being such a big part of this team's history what was that like on Friday night watching? It was great I was here so I was, I was fortunate enough to be here I was here with my son and uh uh, it was very, very uh, uh, satisfying, satisfying, satisfying for me to see that finally that the streak is over. Uh, no longer can they say the Mets don't have a no-hitter. And, uh, and, and what better guy it happened to? I mean, what he's been through the last year and a half, two years of that surgery to come back and work as hard as he did, uh, he deserved it. Who were some of the former teammates who were here? Sorry, uh, Todd Zeal will be here. When I said Doc, Darrell, Al Leiter, uh, David Cohn is supposed to be there, uh, Brett Saberhagen. Uh, Turk and Dennis Cook, my uh, favorite one, of my, my two favorite guys in Brooklyn. Uh, their kids are in the Little League playoffs, so uh, they can make it. And Jeff Ennis, one of my other favorite uh, players, I think he's here also. And then some of the uh, 69 team guys, I think, are coming also. So. Johnny, when you think back to the 2000 World Series, how, much, how often do you replay that in your mind? And what do you think would have happened if you'd stayed in for the ninth inning of that game? <laughs> well, you know, that's the, you know, Bobby, that's the way we went all year long. We were successful with that, with Armando saving the games. Uh, you know, you always think about it, but, but if Todd's ball was a, a, another two inches higher, it would have went out. The team would have, you know, instead of hesitating to run hard, uh, Paul and Neil would have missed one of those foul balls. It was a great at bat. So, it, you know, those things stick out. But, uh, you know, for me to say you know, things would have been different if I would have been at it, it's not fair for the guys, you know, like Amano and, uh, and the guys who came after me. But uh, it was a great experience, unfortunately for us. We were, you know, on the short end of it. But uh, for me personally, growing up here and, and uh, seeing the Yankees on must day one, finally getting a chance after the years that I played here to get in the playoffs and the World Series and play against the Yankees, it was, it was, uh, it was, uh, I was very honored to be there. John, you know what it feels like when, when the fans fall in love with a team. Can you start to see that sort of happening this year? I think so. I mean, I think, you know, the, the guys, uh, the fans are starting to believe a little bit. Uh, you know, each day it's someone different uh, doing the job. Uh, and, and something special. It seems like there's something special going on here. They, they, they got their pretty good mix. Uh, Terry's doing a great job. Dan Worth is doing a good job with the uh, pitchers. As long as they, you know, hopefully stay healthy and get healthy, uh, and um, there's really no one in this division that's uh, head over heels over them. So they've been very competitive, and I'm happy for them. John, do you still think of yourself as a as a general manager type guy in the future? No, no, that that's kind of, that. pitching coach kind of guy. <laughs> no, right now I'm enjoying myself. I'm, my son plays college ball for Brown, and I travel around the country and I watch him. Uh, I do have a job here with the Mets, and they've been very gracious enough for me to come and go and make my own schedule. And I'm enjoying every minute of it. Uh, when they do call upon me to do something, I try to do as best I can to be here for them. And uh, I, I'm enjoying what I do. Maybe down the road, I'm not sure right now, but right now I'm enjoying myself. And John, when you think back about pitching, are you wearing number 31 or number 45? <laughs> well, uh, uh, 45, obviously, I mean, I, I, I gave Mike, you know, 31. And 45, you know, Tug McGraw is my one of my heroes growing up, and I went better way to wear his number. And uh, so 45 would be, would be enough.
I think a no-hitter to sort of energize what Chris was saying. Oh, absolutely. I mean, this look what did, RA did yesterday. And hopefully, you know, Jonathan needs to follow us with tonight. But, you know, as, a, as pitchers, you, you have that friendly competitive, you know, competitive against each other, with each other. You know, one guy tries out there, the other, well, obviously, it's going to be pretty hard to do Santana. But, uh, you know, you want to go out there and, 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 you know, Jonathan probably wants to keep that, uh, you know, scoreless inning streak going. And uh, hopefully he does. John, the, the circle change, that was kind of your, your trademark. Where, where did you learn it? I learned that from uh, when I was with the Dodgers uh, in the instructional league, Sandy Colfax, Dave Wallace, who was very uh, instrumental in my career. Uh, he was my pitching coach in A-ball also. And uh, Larry Sherry, they were the pitching instructors in Scottsdale, Arizona. And I learned it from them, but I uh, really fine-tuned it when I went over to Cincinnati uh, with uh, Freddie Norman. And uh, on the Cincinnati team, Mario Soto at the time probably had the best circle change in baseball. And I just watched and listened and picked up little bits and pieces from those guys. When you were in Cincinnati, what did you think of the 86 Mets? I mean, what well, was the feeling that, as, as an opponent for that team? You just knew they were going to win the way they came on the field. They had that swagger. You know, they, they said, you know, they had that, like, nobody's going to beat us. And, uh, you know, I wanted to be part of that. You know, I, I played in Cincinnati where you had, you know, Barry Larkin. Paul O'Neill, Ron Oster, Buddy Bell, all those guys are from the Cincinnati area, and they're playing at home. And I always want the opportunity to play at home. So, but the, uh, when you play against the '86 Mets, you gotta kind of make sure you're on the top of your game because they're a very good team. John, there's, there's, there's not too many left-handers your size that have made the kind of mark in the game that, that you have. Is that something you're proud of? I mean, well, you overcame some you know, odds. You can't judge a person by his size, but you can judge him by the party hands. And I've always had a big heart. Every time I went out there, I gave 150%. Um, you know, it wasn't pretty at times. I'm not sure I kept a lot of people on the edge of their seats. But I was under control, and I knew what I was doing. And uh, uh, I enjoyed I enjoyed every minute of it. It was a good time and a bad time. You said this team is like 2,000. What is the challenge of keeping up there? This being, the world, this being consistent, you know, I think they're, they're just being consistent. Go in, take one game at a time, you know, win a series. Try not to fall into uh, you know, long losing streaks. They got the makings of uh, uh, some good young players, uh, some good young pitching come out. And uh, you know, Terry, like I said before, Terry's doing a great job with them. Uh, one of his coaching staff. So who's your favorite manager and pitching coaches? Well, I played for Pete Rose in Cincinnati. Pete was my, one of my favorite. Uh, Bobby Valentine was very um, probably one of my best managers I've had. Uh, as far as uh, you know, he got along with everybody. You know, at 9/11, he led the team. Uh, if you were in a foxhole, you want Bobby with you. I think Bobby was probably one of the best managers I had. Pitching coaches, uh, you know, I had so many, but Dave Wallace is at the top of my list. And uh, uh, I think there's so many that have been coming and going, but I think Dave Wallace is probably my favorite.